During this session we will take a look at design solutions for tunnels, stations and contextual infrastructure and we will introduce two more applications into the workflow. We have just seen the front end of the rail design to the detailed side of rail engineering. Now we will introduce station design, tunnel design and detailed structural design into the workflow and show how we can introduce new levels of detail and linking the designs with those further upstream activities. In this session we're going to look at addressing some of the challenges that we have in rail design where technology can help overcome those challenges. Multiple disciplines working together is always a challenge especially when there's different applications with different file formats in, in play. We will look at how we can respond quickly to design changes. So when the rail engineer changes his rail alignment, how that can respond through to the downstream MEP and structural applications. We'll also look at working with complex geometries. Rail projects and other infrastructure projects always have challenging geometries to deal with. So we'll show how we can use different technologies to help overcome those challenges and delivering more complex levels of detail. We'll look at how we can add those levels of detail that are now required in your typical rail and infrastructure projects. We'll address those challenges in the context of station design, tunnel design and other contextual infrastructure that we find in our rail, road and other infrastructure projects. Let's start with station design. As you can see in the image, station design is made up of many disciplines all interfacing and coordinating together. Some of these disciplines are your typical building disciplines, but there are also many other disciplines involved in civil infrastructure. The key to aiding in that collaboration effort and making it more efficient is ensuring that everyone is using the latest data. And a connected data environment like ProjectWise can certainly help here. But the connected data environment is only as powerful as the processes within. A system such as PAS 1192 allows that work in progress coordination to take place. This allows users to work and coordinate together in real time as they design. In this diagram here you can see the work in progress taking place. Users within that environment can share data. It doesn't have to be formally issued. But once it's shared, then it's available to a wider variety of people within the project. Once that design settles and ready for issue, it can be published and then archived off after that. The most efficient process of collaboration is working with file formats that can read each other. This allows a variety of design applications to work together. Where applications cannot read each other, an import-export process is required. This slows down the delivery of data, prevents people spending more time on design, and creates challenges of coordinating and designing in the context of each other's designs. Being able to see each other's information in the context of your design in real time is the key. Here we have a model which includes the rail, tunnel and station which is made up of data from the rail engineer, architect and structural engineer, MEP engineers, landscape architects and facade consultants. This model was built using Bentley Rail Track for the rail components and Ecos and Building Designer for the station and landscape components. Both applications share a DGN format which allows each design to see and coordinate with the other discipline in as real time as the project processes allow. In this case, the structural engineer has a circular opening where the station meets the tunnel. The rail designer has changed his tunnel from circular to rectangular. The structural engineer can make the appropriate changes by referencing the rail design directly to the model. No need for translations or moving the models in space or coordinating using another review application. All is done within the design applications themselves. And here we can look at it in perspective view, move around the model and see what other coordination issues we have and fix within our design application. If we break that model down into disciplines, the right applications that share an interoperable file format can really aid in the workflow. Here we have the architectural component built in Ecos and Building Designer. 
Here we have the structural component built in the same application, both for structures for steel and concrete design. Here we have the mechanical components model with Ecosim Building Designer, and the landscaping components built with a mix of Open Roads Designer for the road engineering and Ecosim Building Designer for the landscape components. And we've combined Ecosim Building Designer and Generative Components to help with the geometrical challenges of that roof structure. The tunnel alignment was modelled with Bentley Rail Track. And we federate that model together in a consistent DGN format to build one entire model. We can also use various presentation styles to have a look at this model. In the top left hand corner, we have some visualization done within Ecosim Building Designer. We strip away the earth and the components of that tunnel to show the different floors of the model. And in the bottom right hand view, we're using Lumen RT to show the station in context of, an, of animated elements such as trees, people and cars. Internally here, we could use Lumen RT again to help with that real time rendering process. So here we can introduce Ecosim Building Designer into the workflow. Ecosim Building Designer is used right across the globe in many different project types. Infrastructure, mining, building, canvases, bridge, dams, nuclear and power. So we can see how we can lever this in rail design as well. The type of people that use Ecosim Building, building Designer are architects, building structural engineers, civil structural engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical landscape architects and bridge engineers. What we'll do is use Ecosim Building Designer with its inbuilt generative components application to help lever off the geometry we already have from Bentley Rail Track to add further detail and more components. Let's start with tunnel design. As you can see we have lots of different components inside the tunnel. The tunnel panels, the sleepers, and we also have a fair degree of electrical, mechanical and lighting design. One of the challenges we face with tunnel design is allowing the components of the tunnel to roll with the rail design. So everything is hanging off what the rail engineer designed. So the rail can't, or going around the corners, up and down hills. The two have to work together in geometrical harmony. What we'll use for this connection is computational design. Computational design is a method in which the design is generated by a set of rules. Most computational design is based on parametric design and is a fast, efficient and effective method of exploring design possibilities. This movie shows the ability to apply variations to a design and to visualize the results very quickly. This allows the designer to make more informed design decisions. Generative Components is based on relational and dependency models, so it captures relationships between parameters and objects. When you change a design midway through, that change will propagate throughout the model based on the relations and dependencies. What normally would have taken several days to incorporate one change, now you can do it in a few hours. Computational design automatically propagates changes without the need to manually rebuild the entire model. And this reduces a lot of rework and eliminates the, disease, the need for one-off modeling. Let's apply journey design in the context of our roof model. Looking at our station roof design here, not only is it geometrically challenging, like many infrastructure projects, where computational design can help resolve those challenges, but we can use computational design to resolve design challenges and look at options. Here we can grab a single point, move it, and the structural elements resolve themselves. Manually, this was a laborious task. The parametric relationships can speed up the process and make it more accurate. We can use the sliders or input nodes to change the values. Here we're going to change the diameter of those structural elements. Again, we're going to look at changing the different um, 
pattern layout on the on the roof structure here. So all we're doing is is grabbing um, one of our wires and moving it from one node to the next. So one node just defines it um, as a certain shape. The second node defines it as a different one. And you can see how many different elements are affected by this change. Here we're using the drop down to have a look at some different shape options. And we do this until we get the design how we want it looking. So how can we use computational design with linear projects? Well, when we talk about advancing BIM with computational design, one strategy is to strengthen the ties and the interoperability between ecosystem building designer and generative components. So therefore, we're using BIM ob objects within the context of computational design and using this on linear projects. If we take a look at that workflow that has been demonstrated throughout this presentation, traditionally for rail design, we start at rail track. But what we did, we introduced more applications at the front end of the process. So we included an application like context capture, which would help with your reality modeling or your point clouds, which can help substitute or or add to that original survey data. Then we're looking at creating our conceptual designs within something like Open Rail Concept Station. And then we're doing the rail engineering pieces in Bentley Rail Track. But further downstream, we can add other applications into that mix. So we saw that Open Bridge Modeler parametrically links to the rail alignment to produce your bridge models. And further downstream, we can add structural reinforcement to those concrete elements. But we can also add Ecosim with generative components for our civil structural design and our MEP design. And considering those are in the mix now, it gives us a chance to do our structural analysis using, using one of the structural analysis applications. So that workflow can look something like this with each application being able to talk to each other and work together. And the key to that success is using or maintaining a common file format. Now this allows us to integrate designs from other applications together within the application that we're choosing to work with. And in the case of Ecosim with generic components, we can then use those elements from referenced files parametrically to allow us to lever off any change that happens in the preceding application. So in this design, we have a circular tunnel. And the tunnel wall panels and sleepers can be linked to the rail track alignment. The objects linked to the alignment are detailed in nature. And the alignments provide a guide for the detailed elements to work from. This, is, this also helps to locate the geometry onto other components and around corners or up and down where the slope of the tunnel varies. In some instances the tunnel will be extruding over three geometrical axes around corners, downhills and dealing with the rail cant itself. Using manual methods to model in three axis geometry movement can be quite challenging. Generative design allows the placement of these components easily and simple around the three axes. Here we're using another example. This time we're going to use a road example which follows the same principles of rail design with an alignment. Here in Open Roads Designer we are moving the road alignment back and forth in plan. When we flick to our 3D model of that it automatically updates the road, the road based on the alignments we change. So what we've done is we've referenced that alignment into Ecosim with generative components and we've built an acoustic wall or a sound insulating wall down the side of the road. We've made those links and when we update our model you can see the walls automatically move themselves over to the parametric links that we've created. So the road designer in this case can make changes and the guy designing the acoustic wall panels can see the benefits. Those walls themselves are full of information properties and can be scheduled, uh, exported to Excel, quantities given, etc, etc. 
In this example, we'll be looking at two things. We'll look at placing a, a, a railing down the side of the tunnel and also some mechanical objects on walls. And those mechanical objects also have brackets. So we're really getting into the detail here. So, this, the railing and the mechanical objects themselves are done with uh, ecosim and generative components. And if we flick over here to the rail track model where the rail engineer has done their rail engineering, what we can do is change the radius of this alignment from 180 to 203 meters, and that alignment does up update. We'll we'll just move to the tunnel model in rail track, and you can see this tunnel adjust itself based on that alignment change. Very good. And now we'll flick back to uh, generic components with EcoSim, and we'll update those references, we'll just reload them in and you can see that tunnel shift based on the uh, the rail engineer's movements. So what we need to do now, because we've provided a parametric link between that rail alignment and the railing and mechanical components, we can have those automatically update. Um, it's waiting for our input though to do so. Um, these, these guys are all based off those yellow and red lines that you can see in the model. So once we go and do the update, you can see all those then move back to the wall. Uh, to remodel that manually would take some time and effort, but because we've created those geometrical relationships, uh, we can do that pretty instantaneously. There are lots of tools and features inside Ecosim that can be used quite well in infrastructure projects. For starters, it, pro it provides all the functionality that MicroStation provides, plus more. <laughs> It has real structural objects, both steel and concrete, meaning that these structural objects can be passed to analysis application and have structural properties. There's lots of miscellaneous but dedicated object tools inside Ecosim, so dedicated tools for things like beams and stairs and railings and walls, things that are designed and used within all infrastructure projects. It is DGN based, which means it integrates with all the other DGN based applications that you can include in the workflow. And it can read many, many different file formats. Its flexible geometry that's required by many infrastructure projects is inherent inside Ecosim. And its modeling is relatively easy to master. It's also inclusive of computational design application generative components, which allows you to provide those parametric links back to applications such as Bentley Railtrack and Open Roads Designer. So one of the key aspects of uh, Ecosim um, is its drawing generation and its information property creation. So one of the concepts inside Ecosim is its parts and families, which allows you to re-symbolize your objects for both 3D presentation, you can see with the materials on the objects here, but for also drawing presentation. So you can see the re-symbolization in the cut of the objects here. In addition, we have the data group system, which provides all the information properties on objects. And those information properties are unlimited. You can create any information property you want. And you can also edit and update the uh, information properties with the bi bi-directional link with Excel. So if Excel is an easier way for you to get your information properties um, onto the objects, um, then feel free. So it really helps with those miscellaneous modeling requirements. So here on this bridge, you can see all those miscellaneous uh, things like the railings and, and barricades and the like that you can really um, use Ecosim for that. This is a good diagram here of um, the miscellaneous modeling requirements of um, this road. So we've got the road, um, road asphalt, and it's, it's, it's bits and pieces, but there's also the miscellaneous pieces like the gantries or stairs and railings or bollards and uh, concrete walls and the like that can really play a part with, um, say, open roads designer working together with a, the same file format. You know, lightings in tunnels is another example, or these fan units, the panels on the wall. Um, really handy to, to do with inside the same file format. So again, just reinforcing the importance of considered workflows, um, you know, try and get that those file formats all talking to one another, um, the use of referencing or linking other people's objects and 
maintaining those parametric links through reference files. Again, we can take that a step further and have a look at uh, reinforcement detailing for, for example, a tunnel segment here. Um, here we'd introduce something like uh, pro structures uh, that can take geometry um, from lots of sources, uh, reference it in and fill it full of reinforcement. Here we, we may model this tunnel segment in Ecosim but uh, reference its file into pro structures to add that tunnel reinforcement or that steel uh, reinforcement inside the concrete. And then we can produce things like um, bar bending schedules and and uh, use the tools within Pro Structures, which is really dedicated to uh, reinforcement design and drawing production. So there's been quite a lot of information uh, in this presentation today. Um, so recently Bentley have updated the way we access our um, learning and development content or improve the advancement process to help uh, users um, be comfortable and get familiar with the products and, and use, use more of what's inside the product that they may be using. And one of the keys to this is, is, the, is the connection client. Um, the connection client, uh, once you install a uh, connect application, um, is is a little application that you'll find down in the bottom right hand corner in the tray of your system. Um, if you're using a pre-connect product you can download the connection client from the Bentley website or you can get to the connected area via uh, connect.bentley.com and this provides your access into various areas like uh, online learning, um, public forums, uh, technical support and something new called the Connect Advisor. And the Connect Advisor is an application that works within your applications and provides you um, assistance and uh, learning options from, from an in-application experience. So uh, one thing that's really handy is the communities uh, help. Um, the communities, the Bentley communities, uh, where you can post your questions um, and receive feedback by both users and Bentley staff globally. Um, it's a good way of um, uh, finding information but also seeking information as well. And using the inbuilt or the online Bentley Learn server, if we put uh, some of these links in context of our of our workflows we've been looking at today, you can see that uh, these links there do provide you direct access to the Learn server itself to learn uh, those variety of applications. Alternatively, follow that connection client through, and it will take you through to. Uh, the product page where you can select the product uh, you wish to learn. So just keep in mind there's many different applications from Bentley and what we've seen today is just a few of those from the rail and transit uh, group of applications but there's uh, many others to take into account. So thanks for your time and taking uh, the time out to have a look at this video.